Coffee Break Spanish, programme 48. Buenos dias, how you do? We got something for you. A bit of Spanish you can try. It's not hard, now don't you cry. Mas cerveza, por favor. Un cafecito, I want more. No haggis here, I hope that's fine. Just a bit of Espanol online. Espanol, you're in control. Just be resilient. One in Spanish is dead brilliant. Just be prepared. Mark and Kara will take you there. Now you're on a roll. Hola, soy Mark. Y yo soy Cara. Y estás escuchando Coffee Break Spanish. The podcast which brings you language with your latte. Each episode, we bring you around 15 minutes of Spanish. Just enough for your coffee break, hopefully. And if you're late back to work because you were listening to Coffee Break Spanish, just tell your boss you're undertaking professional development by learning Spanish with us. ¿Cómo estás hoy, Mark? Estoy muy bien, gracias. ¿Qué tal estás tú, Cara? Bien, pero tengo muchos exámenes en este momento. ¿Son difíciles los exámenes? Sí, un poco. Que tengas suerte. Gracias. I asked Cara there if her exams are difficult. Son difíciles. The word for difficult is normally just difícil, but because we're talking about los exámenes, they're plural, and we have to make the adjective plural too. Difíciles. I'm guessing that's what we're doing today then, Mark. Sí, los adjetivos. And, more importantly, the agreement of adjectives. More grammar, then? Claro que sí. ¿Estás lista? Sí, Mark. Estoy lista para aprender español con Coffee Break Spanish. Coffee Break! Coffee Break Español! So, in this week's show, we're going to be looking at adjectives. Adjectives, sometimes known as describing words. Words which tell you what something is like. We're going to start by looking at sort of standard adjectives. Let's take a word, for example, contento. What does contento mean? Happy. Happy, yeah. I would say, estoy contento. I'm happy. Estoy contento. Estoy contento. Okay, now, Cara, you wouldn't say estoy contento. What would you say? Estoy contenta. Contenta. Uh So, the word contento changes because Cara is female. Contento. Contenta. Contento, contenta. Perfecto. Now, we can say, Mark está contento. Cara está contenta. But let's say we were talking about the children. Los niños. Los niños are happy. Now, we've got to think about two things here. First of all, the plural verb. It's not está, but... Están. Están. So, los niños están. And what would we say for happy in this situation? Contentos. Exactly. Contentos. Los niños están contentos. Los niños están contentos. So, the children are happy. Los niños is a masculine plural noun, and we're using the masculine plural adjective. If we were talking about female children, las niñas, we wouldn't say contentos, but... Contentas. Exactly. So, how would you say the girls, the children, are happy? Las niñas están contentas. Muy bien. So... El hombre está contento. El hombre está contento. La mujer está contenta. La mujer está contenta. Los hombres están contentos. Los hombres están contentos. Y las mujeres están contentas. Las mujeres están contentas. Muy bien. So, four different versions of this adjective. Contento, contenta, contentos, contentas. Depending on what the subject is. This is a pattern that's very common in Spanish with adjectives. 
that the masculine singular form ends in O, the feminine singular, A, the masculine plural, Os, and the feminine plural, As. Now there's one other thing that I want to bring in here, and that is the fact that you use the masculine plural form if there is a mixed group. So if you've got, for example, Mark and Cara are happy, Mark y Cara están contentos. You use the masculine plural form, even though there is a female involved as well. In fact, if there are 100 females and just one male, you still have to use the masculine plural form. It's just the way it is. It wasn't me that made up that rule, but that's the way it is. Mark y Cara están contentos. Mark y Cara están contentos. Los niños y las niñas están contentos. Los niños y las niñas están contentos. Muy bien. Okay, we're going to look at a couple of other adjectives now. And they are the words for black and white. The word for black is negro. Negro. So, black also changes depending on what is being described. So, for example, el libro negro. El libro negro. So, what would that mean? A black book. Yeah, the, the black book. El libro negro. The black book. If we were talking about a house, we would be talking about una casa. So, la casa negra. La casa negra. Perfecto. Now, let's imagine we're talking about plural black things. So, for example, we could say los gatos negros. Los gatos negros. And can you remember what un gato is? A cat. A cat, yeah. It's not a cake. Somebody once <laughs> said that un gato was a cake, but then you end up with a funny tasting cake. Anyway, un gato is a cat, so los gatos negros are the black cats. Los gatos negros. Los gatos negros. How would you say the cats are black? Los gatos están negros. Now, here's a question. Are the cats always black? Is that an inherent quality of the cats? Or is it just something that's temporary? Is it because they just happen to be black at the moment? No, it's probably permanent. So it would be... Los gatos son negros. Los gatos son negros. Muy bien. Los gatos son negros. The chances are colour does tend to be a fairly permanent thing. So you're more likely to use ser when you're talking about a colour. Los gatos son negros. Los gatos son negros. Muy bien. Let's talk about something else that might be the colour black. We could talk about la mesa. La mesa is... The table. Yeah, so tienen una mesa para cuatro. Do you remember back to that? So the black tables. Las mesas negras. Now just watch the formation of the plural. It's las mesas. Las mesas. Las mesas negras. Las mesas negras. Okay, so you got the adjective right. Las mesas negras. Las mesas negras. Perfecto. Now we've spoken about black, which is negro, negra, negros, negras. Let's talk about white. Blanco. Blanco. Blanco, meaning white, is the masculine singular version. So let's go back to that cat. El gato es blanco. El gato es blanco. The cat is white. Or if we just wanted to talk about the white cat, we would say El gato blanco. El gato blanco. Now, 
Let's think of another animal that is a white animal and it's a feminine animal. We could talk about la paloma. La paloma. Do you know what una paloma is? I don't have a clue. A polar bear? <laughs> no, it's not a polar bear. If I say una paloma blanca, does that mean anything to you? No. Okay, Cara, you're too young. Una paloma blanca. Does this not mean anything at all to you? No. Okay, we're just going to stop proceedings for just a moment. Okay, we're back. I've just shown Cara Una Paloma Blanca by the George Baker selection on YouTube. <laughs> and Cara now knows Una Paloma Blanca. I do, but, but I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> good. <laughs> una Paloma Blanca. Let's get back to the grammar here. Paloma is a dove. It's actually a pigeon too, okay? But when you're talking about Paloma Blanca, it's a white pigeon, so it's a dove. Una Paloma is feminine, so blanca is also feminine. Una paloma blanca. Una paloma blanca. Un gato blanco. Un gato blanco. Dos gatos. Blancos. Dos palomas. Blancas. Muy bien. So we've had blanco, negro. We've also had contento. There are lots of adjectives that end in O, and then obviously take their feminine ending a, os for masculine plural, and as for feminine plural. Now, there are some adjectives that you'll come across that end in e, the letter e. So in Spanish, that has the sound e. Think, for example, interesante. Interesante. Now, I'm going to take you back to a little song that we did way back in unit Two, I think. <laughs> hay muchas cosas interesantes. Yeah, hay muchas cosas interesantes. That's quite an interesting line because let's think of it. It's got two adjectives in there. Muchas. Muchas meaning many. And interesantes meaning... Interesting. So, muchas cosas interesantes. So, the muchas... Works like blanco, blanca, blancos, blancas. It becomes muchas, because we're talking about cosas here. And interesantes has a slightly different ending. It ends in es. So the singular version of interesante ends in the sound e, interesante. And the plural version adds an s, interesantes. Interesantes. Another couple of examples could include inteligente. Inteligente. So, for example, Mark es inteligente. <laughs> Mark es inteligente. Cara es también inteligente. Cara es también inteligente. Mark y Cara son inteligentes. Mark y Cara son inteligentes. Y modestos. Sí, claro. <laughs> so we've got inteligente, we've got interesante. Let's take another one that begins with an I. Importante. Importante. So the singular form is importante, regardless of whether it's masculine or feminine. Un libro importante. Un libro importante. Una persona importante. Una persona importante. An important person. And when we put that into the plural, then we have dos personas importantes. Dos personas importantes. Dos personas importantes. Muy bien. Okay, we've had words that end in O in the dictionary form. So, for example, contento. And then the endings that come after that would be contenta, contentos, contentas. And we've also had words that end in E. So, inteligente and the plural form, inteligentes. 
Let's put some of these adjectives to work now because we're going to describe people and to do that, we need just a few more words to cover the vocabulary that you need to talk about people. Let's begin with alto. Alto. Alto is linked to the English words altitude and altimeter and so on. It means literally high, but when we're talking about a person, it means tall. So, un hombre alto. Un hombre alto. How would you say a tall woman? Una mujer alta. Muy bien. Una mujer alta. So, alto, alta, altos and altas, of course. Now, the opposite of alto is bajo. Bajo. Bajo means small. It literally means low, just as alto literally means high. But you talk about una persona baja. Una persona baja. So, un hombre bajo. Un hombre bajo. Una mujer baja. Una mujer baja. Okay, let's learn the words for thin and not so thin. Delgado. Delgado. Delgado means thin. Delgado. Delgado. And the feminine form delgada. Delgada. And the Spanish word for fat is gordo. 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 The feminine form being gorda. Gorda. Now, El Gordo in Spain is actually the name of the lottery. So you talk about El Gordo being the big fat prize that you win if you win the lottery. <laughs> El Gordo. El Gordo. Now, another couple of words here that we're going to learn quickly is Moreno. Moreno. Moreno means dark skinned, dark featured, so dark hair, dark skin and so on. So Moreno. Moreno. Which becomes obviously morena, morenos, morenas. And the other word is rubio. Rubio. Rubio meaning blonde or fair hair and fair skinned and so on. Rubio. Rubio. That's R-U-B-I-O. Rubio. Rubio. And it becomes rubia, rubios, rubias. Now, so far, we've been looking at adjectives to describe things or to s describe people and, and, and so on. One thing that I've not mentioned yet, and that is where the adjective comes. Think of this. El gato blanco. El hombre inteligente. La mujer alta. In each case... The adjective is coming... After the noun. Yeah, it's coming after the noun. El hombre inteligente. Inteligente is coming after the noun. But that's not the way we do it in English. In English we say the intelligent man. El hombre inteligente. You can say in Spanish el inteligente hombre. It sounds very strange. There are some situations where adjectives do come before the noun, but we're going to cover them next week. We're going to leave this here this week. It's very much the start of something this week. We're going to be continuing with this next week. And hopefully we'll be putting these adjectives to good use in a little activity fairly soon. Coffee break. Coffee break Espanol. Y ya está. Hopefully you'll now be able to describe people using these adjectives and phrases. And we'd suggest that you do just that this week when you're walking around, perhaps doing some shopping for the holiday season. Why not try to describe the people you see around you in Spanish? Now, just while we're on the topic of holiday shopping, you may not know yet that there is a massive sale currently on in the Radio Lingua store. You can save 30% on the normal costs of the season passes, so now is the time to make your Christmas purchases. And if you want to buy a season pass for someone else, then we can provide a gift certificate so that your friend or loved one has something to open on Christmas Day or whenever you give your gifts. So head over to the Radiolingua store on www.radiolingua.com forward slash store. And don't forget to follow the instructions to ensure that you can take advantage of the special holidays discount code. 
Coming up after the final title music, we have a promo about our latest addition to the Radiolingua podcast library. Mark was over in Ireland last week and took the opportunity to do some recording. I was indeed, and you can now subscribe to One Minute Irish. Learn a squailge, Irish Gaelic in minutes, with our friend and colleague Owen. So listen in at the end of the show to find out how you can learn Irish with the Radiolingua Network. That's it for today. Ya está. We'll be back very soon with more Spanish. In the meantime, muchas gracias como siempre y hasta pronto. Adiós. Chiaditch, es misha Owen. My name is Owen and I'm here to tell you about a new podcast which will help you learn the basics of Irish. You can learn enough Irish to get by in a matter of minutes. Our free weekly lessons will have you making yourself understood in Irish in no time. For more information, visit www.1minutelanguages.com. Gorav Mahagut, August Slonger Fol. Thanks and goodbye for now. This podcast was brought to you by the Radiolingua Network. Find out more at www.radiolingua.com.